You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Welcome to Gabriola TV. I'm Teresa O'Leary and I'm here with Will Sprogus, the fire chief for Gabriola Island. Welcome, Will. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us. So we are in a, a severe situation this summer in terms of wildfires with what's happened in Kelowna, Lahaina down in Maui, evacuations from Yellowknife and more in the news. What's been going through your mind the last couple of weeks as all that's been happening? Um, just making sure that the membership's prepared and making sure that we kind of have an idea of what, what the plan is and make sure that the public are aware of our evacuation study that was done in, tw in 2022. And uh, yeah, just making sure that that's in the media and that people are recognizing that, know which zone they're in, and that they're signed up for a voyant alert system with the RDN so they, they do get the early call to evacuate. Okay, and tell me about that plan, that emergency plan. Yeah, so it was a study done by the RDN. Um, they looked at uh, removing people from Gabriola using Gabriola Ferry, so with the two ferries in service. Um, the, the plan is good in the sense that they'll use the Gabriela Ferry to remove people. They also did the study with other agencies such as Coast Guard, RCM SARS, and, uh, and other vessels that are available for the island. We did practice last August, we practiced evacuating uh, the whalebone area out and we used the road to the ferry as well. We used the hovercrafts from the uh, Vancouver airport and we used one hovercraft to transport people from um, Sandwell Beach to uh, Pilot Bay on Gabriela. And after that exercise, how were you feeling about your, your readiness? Uh, we were feeling quite good because we hear that the hovercraft can make good time to Gabriel if they're not facing a headwind. They could be here in about 20 minutes. Um, and the nice thing about the hovercraft is it can beach right up on the beach so we can get people and we can get mobility challenge people on the vessel if we have to. Okay. So I'm new to the island. I don't know anything about escaping a fire. I do know about earthquakes because there's been a lot of public education around that. Uh, you know, we all have our emergency kits for the earthquake, but I haven't seen anything similar in terms of fire risk, and it's been such a severe summer. Uh, do you think there's enough being done to in, inform people like me who's I'm new to the island? I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah, I think we're, well, we're doing our best. We are a volunteer organization. Um, I'm the only paid staff, myself and the administrative assistant um, are the only paid staff here. So we feel we're doing a good job in that sense. Um, we have an active Fire Smart program. Uh, we have a Fire Smart coordinator that gets around and does talks. As well, we host open houses and we have a website, gabriellafire.ca. You can find our links to Fire Smart and other materials there that are needed. Um, as well, we, do, we try to do an uh, open house in the spring um, to bring awareness to the oncoming wildfire season and uh, really just getting those community members together in uh, grassroots groups to start fire smarting their neighborhoods. Um, that's going to make the, the difference and, and uh, we're seeing that difference. We do have crews on some of the fires across BC right now and uh, they can tell by properties that have been fire smart versus properties that haven't been fire smart and fire fire does uh, it does improve the situation and fires will move around structures like that. Can you tell me a little bit more about that what they're seeing in that difference? Uh, so what they're seeing is they're seeing basically it's just uh, well organized properties that uh, remove fuel load from those properties. They've also prepared the house with materials on the roof and on the walls to keep the fire um, from entering into the premises as well keeping it away keeping vegetation away from the house like trees um, and then keeping your furniture like your lawn furniture putting that away or having the ability to cache it somewhere away from the house um, what our crews are supporting with is sprinkler operations so they'll go in and they'll protect that structure with sprinklers um, so our crews have a water truck out on, on the fires right now that are help supplying water and potentially going back to those houses and putting out spot fires. So yeah, just basically 
we want people to prepare their house and uh, a winter storm and seeing where the snow falls is a good example of where the ember cast is going to end up on your house. So if you've got decks um, with, with combustible material on the decks or, or uh, furniture there, that's likely spots that might collect embers and then catch fire. So to learn more about it though, please go to our website and look at um, FireSmart and Gabriel's FireSmart program. Do you think that local people here on the island are taking it seriously and doing those things? Yeah, we have quite a few neighborhoods. Um, there's a NEPS program that's run by the RDN, uh, Shirley Nicholson that gets around and puts these groups together. So they're prepared not just for wildfire, but for any emergency that are going to hit. Um, and that's what it's going to take. And, and it proved proved itself uh, with the power outage that we saw and communications outages that we've seen in the past. Those neighborhoods work together. Um, they start a resource list of what resources they have in their neighborhood. And yeah, everyone works as a team to keep everyone safe. So we really want to promote that and make sure that everyone's aware of the, the NEPS program. Right. And if they have questions about it, they're, please call the fire hall and we're happy to direct them to that program. You mentioned earlier to me something about the 911 had been down for a while and you guys have taken some steps to rectify that situation? Yeah, so we've been working on that. We've had two communications outages. Um, one this last winter uh, where we saw 911 down for uh, six days uh, and the fire hall was actually turned into a dispatch sensor center while that, com that emergency was going on. Um, pe some people could still make calls, local calls into the fire department, but outgoing calls off the island couldn't go out. And cell phone was down because the only connection to the island was through the landline to the cell tower. So crews were here and able to radio out to our dispatch to get our members paged out to emergency calls, as well as the ambulance and RCMP. So we were acting as that, that go-between. Um, I've been actively working on getting interagency to work together. We've got a common radio frequency now um, that's based off a repeater off Mount Benson. Um, so communications in that situation where cell tower or landlines going down, we can use our radios to communicate around the island. Um, so yeah, we're just in the process of getting everyone on board with those, with those radios in there the program. Great. So since I just arrived here about a month ago and I've been hearing a lot of the local talk I guess and I must say I feel I, I've been hearing a lot of fear in local people uh, particularly about the visitors coming to the island. Um, there's uh, a lot of fear around people coming here and not knowing the fire risk or not understanding how severe it is. And I just wondered, what are your thoughts around that? Um, I think st locals, as being stewards of the island, uh, and play a very important role. They need to go out and help educate um, our guests to the island to make sure that everyone's up on it. And just friendly reminders of fire safety and that Gabriola isn't like other communities that has large fire departments with mutual aid. Um, and just a friendly reminder that, yeah, we're a small knit community. Uh, we rely on our volunteers to respond to fire calls and uh, medical calls. So we just, yeah, ask them to help respect our area. Right. Keep it safe. Do you think there should be more done on that? I tell you, as a person who's come to the island, I was shocked that on the ferry, there were no signs, no brochures, no message from the captain telling me about the severe extreme fire risk that we're in. Mm -hmm. And I just wondered, is that, in the past I've heard that that was done in other situations, so I'm just curious if you think BC Ferries should be doing something to cooperate with the fire department to make sure that people are informed coming to the island. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, we have in the past had the uh, BC Ferries communicate that message. Um, I'll double check in with them. 
It's a little harder now that we have two vessels. We used to have a very local crew that knew um, the message and would get the message out. We now have one ferry that's based out of Nanaimo. So yeah, I'll, I'll check in and see if that messaging can be provided. Right. Um, but then again, just yeah, always go to our website and people are urged to call the fire hall if they have any questions. Sure, but a lot of people come over for a weekend or they come on their boats from Silva Bay and you know, they're city people and not all people know about the vulnerability of the islands, right? So yeah. uh, I actually talked to Susan Yates at the Islands Trust about it. So she actually is working on that as well because from my perspective, I would have loved it if somebody had really raised my awareness right away. Mm -hmm. Luckily, when I came on the island, my friends did that. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that's just one thing I was just wondering about. Now, what else can be done to ensure that we protect our, I mean, we're vulnerable on an island, right? Mm -hmm. So how, what else can be done or is there more that should be done in your opinion, given the extreme nature of where we're at right now? Yeah, this is some of the teachings that the RDN are gonna push and the NEPS program is your grab and go bags, have all your documents and stuff ready to go. Um, yeah, be prepared to be 72 hours on your own. Um, yeah, make sure you have enough food and water for that. And that's any emergency, not just wildfire. Um, so it's really, really getting getting together and making sure that neighborhoods are organized. Okay. Any final thoughts? Um, any message you want to give yeah, out? Yeah, always the message that uh, we are a volunteer organization. We are paid on, paid on call, fire department. Um, and we're looking to recruit people. Um, right now we're doing a recruitment drive. We're looking for six members, and uh, yeah, people can apply. Uh, we've got a link on our website, and there's a recruitment link. Please go to the re recruitment link and click on um, the application form if you're interested. We do a lot of uh, very interesting stuff. We obviously fire is our first priority, fire, fire safety. Um, we do rescue, we do medical. Medical is the bulk of our calls, about 70%. So we're training people up to EMR level, which is emergency medical responder. Uh, it's the base level that the paramedics have. Um, so it gives us a lot of capability to help treat our, our um, residents of Gabriola. Right. Yeah. Are you worried about being able to recruit firefighters at a time when, you know, some we've had a couple of deaths this summer with the firefighters uh, fighting the wildfires, right? Um, yeah, I think... I think from the recruitment standpoint, um, we're such a close-knit group um, that support each other. Um, a lot of people call it the fire family. So once they do come out to a practice, they realize that uh, it is like a, a very close group. They get together and they feel quite safe. They can put their trust in each other. Why do you do this? I mean, this is very dangerous work if, if you did have to go into any fire, especially a wildfire. Mm -hmm. what, what drives you to do this? Um, it drives me to do this because I grew up in this community. Um, I'm raising a family in this community. Uh, my parents live in this community. So we just want to keep everyone safe. And uh, yeah, that, that's what drives me to wake up and do this every day is just uh, knowing that I'm protecting the people that we care about. Okay, thanks so much, Will. Thank you. That was Will Sprogus, Fire Chief for Gabriola Island.